Hello, welcome back to Yak Outdoors. So I was fishing the backwater the other day, and、uh, there was a small alligator just popped up next to my boat. I was like, "Ooh, gotta go, gotta go!" Ooh, ooh. I have seen baby gators in the nest, and boy, they look adorable and delicious. Now I think like a fish. And look at this bass. Some bigger gator probably did that. When I saw this, I was like, "Gator eat fish, so fish should eat baby gators, right?" Then I thought maybe I should make baby gator bait that will complete the circle. Hmm, sounds good. So I came back and start to Google baby gator pictures. As you can see,、uh, they all have this black and white stripe pattern on their back. They have some spikes on the back too. And when they swim, they kind of tuck in their legs, I guess, for better gliding. I've made a soft plastic baby gator before, and it doesn't work that well because the tail is too stiff. Although I make it curl like that,、um, but it stays that way. So I'm going to make a hard gliding bait this time. It will be a top water too. So here's the design drawing.、Uh, here's the head, eyes, and neck area, and the body. And this time, I'm going to make the tail straight. Now the legs.、Uh, I will add some toes as well. Because I'm making a gliding, swimming version, so I'm making the legs tuck into the body. I will also add some spikes pattern on the back. Now the cut. I'm making the first cut inverse.、Uh, if you have seen my previous video, I found that the inverse cut can provide side-to-side -side gliding action even without the lips. So I'm adding that feature here. Just the first one. And as you can see, the legs kind of in the way of the cut. So I will. Purposely move that a little bit forward to avoid the cut. Because this will be a floating bait, so I need to make a proper weight distribution. And when it floats, I want the eyes to be above the water. So I need to add some weight in the second segment, maybe also in the end of first segment. All right, here's the basic design. Now let's go to Fusion 360. In this design, I will start with the head and then move on to the body and make some legs and add the、uh, spikes pattern on the back. And finally, I'll make the cut. I will show you how I design the、uh, through wire cavity and also the weight chamber.
for the eye, first I created a sphere and then I cut it into the eyeball and eyelid portions and because eyelid is uh, just a little bit bigger than the eyeball, I use press pull to make it bigger and then I combine them into one piece and move it to the right place. For the pupil, the goal is to make a smooth indent on the eyeball. So first, I draw the outline for the pupil. Then I use extrude to make the offset cut. And once I have the cut, I use fillet to smooth out the inside edges. I should have done the mirroring after I finish all the detail on one eye but uh, here's the tip you can move the mirror operation at the timeline to a later time after uh, you finish the pupil so you don't need to do the pupil twice after I combine the head and the eyes I added the fillet at the boundary between the eyes and the head. That fillet gives the gator a mean look, don't you think? When you project lines to surface, you can select multiple curves and also multiple faces and do it all at once. Alright, the head is completed. Let's take a closer look. Next, let's move on to the body. And here I also use the pipe form as the starting point for sculpting. The goal here is to make the cross sections anatomically correct. And fortunately there are tons of baby gator pictures to look at from the internet.
for the spike patterns on the back I basically um, draw the line and project those lines to the back uh, to form the path that I want those spikes on and once I have that I create a spike and copy that to each path and create a series of spikes using the pattern on path feature Remember to set the orientation to path orientation because uh, if you don't do that, if you choose identical, each object will be facing the same direction. That doesn't look right. At this point, the 3D modeling for the alligator is pretty much done. I didn't put in the toes for this demo, but in the original design, I did put in the toes. Basically, they are just pipe forms. I created one and then copy paste to different places. That's it. Cutting the 3D model into the segments is straightforward. Just draw lines and uh, use the thin extrude. Because it's a thin extrude, you can adjust the thickness easily. And as you can see, I use the inverse cut between the first and the second segments. One of the benefits of using the inverse cut is that you don't need to have the lips. Remember to check out my other video to find out why I did that. Here's a view of the through wire cavity and uh, the hooks will be installed at the first and the third segments. Here I'm showing the left side of the second segment where I have the weight chamber. Originally I plan to print this in two pieces. After print, I will put in the weight in the chamber and then glue these two pieces together. But later on I thought that's too much work. So instead of printing two pieces, I will just print one piece and during printing I will pause the process and put in the weight and then resume printing. And that way I will just print one piece. In terms of the amount of the weight to add, uh, first you can find out the volume of the piece and then find out how much filament you use, then calculate the additional weight accordingly. Or you can just use a try and error, print, put in weight. If it's wrong, do it again.
I added total four metal beads, two in the first segment and two in the second segment. And boy, they make a big noise. And as you can see, it floats quite nicely, as uh, how I want it. So here is how it swims. Uh, I just drag it along the pool side. I didn't twitch or anything. Just uh, walk by the pool at a constant speed. Uh, sometimes I stop and then I go again. And you see if I stop, it will try to glide to the side a little bit. Overall, it swims pretty good and uh, the only thing I don't like is the last segment. It doesn't move as much as the other joints. Probably because I used the braided line as the joint and also it's too light. But in the future, if I want to build it again, I will use a hard joint. Maybe add a little bit weight in the last segment. Next step is to paint this bad boy. That will be my first airbrush work. So leave comments if you have any tip for me. Like and sub, you know what to do. I will see you next time. Peace.